This episode of Suds with Luds is brought to you by Early Bird Gummies. Early Bird Gummies are a recreational hemp product and contain 2.5 milligrams of natural THC and 12.5 milligrams of CBD in each gummy. They are formulated with a microdose of THC and are designed to make you feel good. We often say that Early Bird will put a smile on your face and are great for taking the edge off. The Suds with Luds discount code is SUDS, S-U-D-S. Good for 20% off a customer's first purchase. For me, take them at bedtime. Helps me get a great sleep at night. Try our early bird gummies. I inserted a pass. Lettman, shot, tip, save, rebound. Still loose hole. He scores it. Yes, yes, yes. The Stars win the Stanley Cup. The Stars win the Stanley Cup! All right. Well, welcome into another episode of Suds with Luds. Uh, today, I'm not even sure how to introduce the dude because there's I, there's a Rolodex and there's a list of things. I mean, he's got a wall full of Emmys. He's been to the Olympics calling NHL games. He's been the voice of the Dallas Stars for 20-plus years. Uh, so let's just bring him in. Ralph Strangis. Ralphie, you are lounging out there in California. Mm -hmm. I got a chance to run into you. It was a great, I didn't even know you were coming a couple of weeks ago at the induction of Darian Hatcher and Bob Yaney into the Dallas Stars Hall of Fame. It was a, it was a great moment to see you just standing there with that smirk on your face, um, up in the suite. Ralph, how have you been? I'm well, Luds. I'm well. It's great to see you too. I've uh, I really enjoyed that. That was a nice weekend, and the stars did a really good job there with that. Uh, I, and and making sure, you know, uh, I I feel welcome there now, which is great. Um, we've all worked kind of hard at that, I think, and that's good. Uh, I I really, you know, and Bob called me, and what are you going to do? Bob calls you. Oh yeah, of course I'd love to come, and it was a nice event, man. It, that that thing at uh, Gillies was was really fun. I I had a I had a blast. Like it was fun talking to fans and fun seeing everybody and fun, you know, seeing some of the team, the guys that I knew a little bit. They're down to just two now, you know. I know it's, that. Uh, I yeah, know. it's it's t t uh, Tyler and Jamie. Yeah. And uh, so I got to meet Tyler's fiance, and um, so that was kind of that was a highlight of the weekend. Well, and so, isn't uh, isn't it funny how when you look at Tyler's fiance and Jamie's girl. Uh, all I could say is wow, <laughs> right? <laughs> what, are we going to have a Brent Musburger, Kirk Herb Street moment here? No, you know um, what I was going to say. It reminds me of a story uh, back in the day. You remember Shuddy? Steve Shutt played for the Montreal Canadiens, a sniper, right? So you know, I'm a rookie, and and I, I wasn't part of the conversation, but I was standing there. I think we were obviously in a bar somewhere, and and Nino, that that's uh, Shuddy's wife, and she was there. It was probably some event in Montreal going on, and. And somebody said to him, he goes, well, how, how did you ever meet Nino? And Shuddy looked at him and he says, I'm not really sure, but I, I opened up my wallet and turned around and there she was. So, <laughs> so not that that has anything to do, not that that's got anything to do no, with Jamie no, and no. Tyler, no, no, but you no, know no, what no. I'm saying? No, Ralphie, no, no. I, I want to add that, like, let's get the hat thing out of the way since we're right here. I mean, not for, okay. for the people that aren't aren't tuning in and watching this. Ralphie's been sporting this this lid that he's got. It looks like he's going snow skiing, but Ralphie, tell, talk to us about the, the hat because the logo is kind of hard to see for me, but yeah, it's a gray maybe on here gray. where I'm sitting in Dallas, it should be hard to see. Yeah, it's a gray on gray Minnesota Vikings hat. Now, anybody who knows me or has heard of me or has followed me even casually knows the Minnesota Vikings and I got to Minnesota exactly the same time, 1961, and they've been kicking me in the nuts for 61 <laughs> years. Um, you know, Not this year, like, every year ends badly. And when we get one of these, every self-respecting Viking fan knows this is really going to be a kick in the nuts. Like, I, I don't know how this is going to end, but um, how do you feel, gonna, though? How, how do you huh? feel after all these years? How, how do you feel about your team? Well, you know, it's, it's funny. I, I think that they deserve big mention and they never get it in the, um, you know, in the Cubs discussion, the Red Sox discussion that. And, and the Vikings are different than either of those teams because they are always around it. 
You know, they've been to four Super Bowls. They've been to 12 NFC championship games. They've won their division, I, I don't even know, 25 times. Um, <laughs> but as you know, being a Packer fan and following uh-huh. this division very closely, they never get it done. And um, and that's that's very scary. So a 61-year drought is, to me, you're in the club, man. And, um, and I just, you know, it, it, they've had some epic collapses, too, I think, beyond – beyond the pale of what everybody else. And once every 10 years, we get another run. You know, we had Moss and those guys in 99, and then we had Favre and that group in 09. And now, you know, it's another dozen years later, and we've got, uh, I I like the coach. I like the kind of the attitude. Jefferson's a stud. The offense seems to be moving the ball, but they got huge defensive cracks. And I don't know if they can. But there's one thing I didn't hear you say. Do you like the quarterback? Well, you know, um, mm. I've never really been a cousins guy, okay. but I think he's having his best year with the Vikings this year. And I think it's, it's, uh, it's not a coincidence that he's got a, his coach reached out and said, you know, I think I'd like to have a relationship with you. And I don't think Zimmer ever did that. So it shows, uh, you know, the offense scores their way out of trouble. It's, it's going to be interesting. I, I don't think, you know, their two losses are Philadelphia and Dallas. And mm-hmm. that's, that's the troublesome stuff. And they don't, beat a lot of teams with 20 records. And when you look deep on their defensive analytics, oh my God, it's, you know, play action. They're the worst team in the league against play action. Do you know they allow nine yards per play action attempt? I mean, that's crazy. Alfie, so, Ralph, you, do you, do you study this team much? Not much. No, oh, uh, just, you know, listen, I got to do something. The, the stars are actually good. Wait uh, now, wait now. When you say you have to do something, there was a letter that you wrote. What was that in 2015? What was that? What was the year that you wrote the letter, Ralph? It was what an letter? incredible letter about basically moving on to the next phase of, you know. Oh, yeah. When I left the stars. Yeah. yeah I, I wrote that in the morning news. Yeah. And, and, and so, part of that was about act one and act two. And, and, but you're, you're writing, you're writing plays and you have books and you're a consultant and you have all these things going on. So you're not retired, are you? You're, you're just, Oh you're, no! You're, well, I, I don't like the word, right? Right. And um, I'm I'm always, you know, I'm up at seven o'clock this morning. Um, I don't have to get up at seven o'clock this morning, but I get up at seven o'clock. I'm sort of on the, you know, okay. So I live, think Del Boca Vista, right? Oh yes, Morty Seinfeld, Jack Columbus, right? Yes. So I, I live in a resort in Palm Springs, California. Is it a senior citizens resort? No, okay. but there's a lot of us here. There's okay. a lot of older people here and it's fun. Um, but everybody that stays here is either that lives here or stays here is here to have a good time. So right. I like that. Um, but I like doing lots of different things. I, I I had a podcast with the same group with Ted and the boys that you have with a, you know, with a married Roman Catholic priest, father of five. That that was really interesting to me since I've left the stars. Like you said, you know, I've, I've done the Olympics. I've done eight outdoor games for, for the NHL. I did the global series in Europe when I was able to go over there. I consulted for the Chicago Blackhawks last year, helping them restock their broadcasting pond. I, you know, I've, I've done a lot of different things. I directed a play here this summer. I teach at, at summer theater camp here. I'm writing a play. I, you know, I just, I like everything, you know, I, I like doing different things. And so, um, so yeah, there's sometimes I wish I was in the booth again, calling games, mm-hmm. But most times I'm very happy that I'm doing what I'm doing and have an opportunity to do a lot of different things for a lot of different people that, 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 that keeps it fresh. So Ralph, then can, can we go back to the beginning then uh, and and how you actually got into the business? Because I I know you started doing, you you were working high school and wrestling and cricket and volleyball and croquet and all this other kind of stuff. But so how, how did you, and and I want you to go into the, to the Al Shaver. I, I know Al is a very good and was a very close friend of yours and, you know, gave you an opportunity here. But how, how you got from the high school doing things to the day that you had your little trial with Al Shaver? I'm a pain in the ass, buddy. Yeah. Well, I don't you think know, you no, are. I mean, you, there may be some people yeah. in the Stars organization that think you are. I don't know, but I'm just oh, saying, no, I don't, don't think, think you I'm are. A pain in the ass. Um, but nothing gets done, you don't push. Right. And I'm a pusher. And I was either going to get the job as the Minnesota North Stars uh, assistant analyst, radio play-by-play guy, dinner reservation maker for the Hall of Fame guy, all of those things, or they were going to file a restraining order on me. <laughs> um, but they were going to know who I was. And I and so 
I had done like like all of us do way back in the day. I've done and people know this story probably. I, you know, you do everything from I'm 10 years old. I get my first tape recorder. I work, you know, in my grade school gym and on the sidelines of the football field. My my uh, junior high football coach, I was you know, I was four foot 10, weighed 85 pounds. He said, I tell you what, what if I give you a camera and you go sit up in the press box and shoot all our practices and games? That sounded a lot more fun to me. So uh -huh. I did that when I was 12, 13 years old. And then I would put highlight reels together for the team. I got an experimental disc jockey job on a teenage rock and roll station when I was 16. I started calling games for cable TV when I was 18. And it just kept going and going and going. And I did, I was the last play by play man for the American Wrestling Association. I did women's professional volleyball, on and on and on and on. Until one day, do you remember Dan Mandich? Yes, I do. Right? Ohio State guy, yep. um, uh, de defenseman for the North Stars. Well, separately, I had met Mandich through a friend of mine in 1988 or 89, and I was best man at my friend's wedding, and 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 uh, his wife and Mandich's wife were friends, so I met Mandich. So when Norm Green bought the North Stars in 1990, um, I in fact, it was really strange. I happened to be turning the channels that night, and it was a – I think I had to get up and cross the room and turn the thing right back in the day. Yeah. Um, but I was turning the channels one night and I saw Norm Green being interviewed on KMSP Channel 9 in Minneapolis. And he had just bought the team. And I watched the interview. And remember, in those days, there's no Internet. There's no, you know, Instagram. There's no I can't watch the highlights. If you didn't see it, you didn't see it. Sure. And I happened to see it. And so I knew some stuff about what his philosophy was just coincidentally. And the next day, Dan Mandich called me and said, listen. They're, apparently, they fired everyone except the Hall of Fame radio play-by-play -play guy, Al Shaver, on, on their broadcasts. And they want a radio analyst, but they also want somebody who can do play-by-play -play in case Al gets sick because he got sick last year. And Al was the guy I grew up listening to my whole life. And he was the only radio voice of the North Stars for 26 years till they moved. And I said, well, I'm not, a, I'm not an analyst. And I'm, you know, I mean, yeah, I can back him up and I can host and I can do interviews and stuff. And they said... And he said, well, they called me. I'm not really the guy, but I think you should call him. And so I called him. And after, you know, going after Norm, I sent letters to Norm Green. I had my sister call as my manager. I, you know, I went after the radio station. I, I mean, everything. Finally, they allowed me an audition. And the first guy I met was Bob Ganey. And the first interview I did was with Bob Ganey on the radio. And the other guys were ex-NHL players. And I knew I could overcome a knowledge gap faster than they could overcome communication skills, right? I knew how to do an interview. I knew how to tag it. I knew how to time it. I knew what the outcues were. I knew the business. And it turned out that that's kind of what they wanted. And so they hired me as radio analyst, heir apparent to Shaver in Minnesota, do the intermission stuff. He didn't want to go to morning skate anymore. All of that, make dinner reservations, uh, which was an important part of the job for Al. Yes, you know. Yes. And um, and we in those days, Luddy, we used to stay over, right? It was commercial flights. Yeah, and that was beautiful. So, but beautiful. So, oh my God. Oh my, yeah. So we, so Al and I would have lunch together. Then we'd eat in the media dining together. And then I better have made a reservation for after the game to have a big steak dinner, wherever the hell we were. So that was my job. And and I loved it. And I had a great time. And sitting there next to a Hall of Fame play by play caller who I had listened to, I could watch how he warmed up. I could watch where his eyes went. I could watch how he called the game. I could I could learn his mechanics. I mean, they were paying me for graduate school. Well, Ralph, and, though, didn't when when you got when you before you got that, tell me about the interview, the the on on job interview. Because the way I thought I read it or heard it was there was some guy that got the first period with Al, second guy, right? You know, and then yeah. the, there were three of you guys. So weren't there for the third four. period? Four there of were you. Four of us. Yeah. So not not much of a a big audition chance you had, did you? No. Well, I didn't know how they assembled this. So Bob Paradise, you remember that name? No, I do not. Paradise I'm living in there, but the I'm, but I don't remember the uh, name. Yeah, no, you, well, you, there's a lot you don't remember. Yeah. Um, but that's a whole nother Well, thing. look at, you can just look on the desk right here. No, Ralphie. I know. You can see no, our listen. partners. We have Whiskey Partners, Herman Marshall, and, and we have Early Bird Gummies. So I'm well, trying to do the I best I can. Early Bird Gummies. Let me tell you something. So this is, this is California now. So this is my Met Center Ice Bucket, which is where the North Stars used to play. But in the Met Center Ice Bucket, just in case guests come, we have the local California product here, <laughs> which is, um, you know, the... The legalized cannabis. So 
just in case. That's what I keep in my ice bucket for guests. And even though I don't drink, I keep stuff in the bar and everything just in case Luddy drops by. So well, you know. now that I know where you are, I know that you're out in Palm Springs area, and now yeah. I, I never you kind of kept that a secret for a while. And I don't know what the hell you'd do if I actually did drop by. Hey, I take you to I take you to the deli for lunch. We'd have matzo ball soup. And matzo ball soup and mini that time. Oh my god, was that good? First time ever. I saw this big <laughs> big softball sitting in the bottom of a of a dish, and I wasn't sure what to do with it. Oh, Lincoln, the Lincoln deal. So anyway, so yeah, it was. So Bob Paradise got the first period. A local sports reporter named Dan Stone King got the second period. And Mandich, because they wanted to see Mandich, did the first half of the third period. I did the second half of the third period. So I was really like, we're just going to put this kid on so he doesn't, so he stops bothering us. I mean, I knew that's what it was. And, but I did it and I was, you couldn't prepare the way you prepare now. There's no information. There was no online. There was, so I found a friend of a friend of a friend who knew Mark Barable and you know, Babby. Oh, Babby. Um, yeah. Babby was at that time, the equipment manager for the Minnesota North stars. And I found him and he gave me a lot of information. And my friend, John Schroeder, who I used to do grade school games with into a tape recorder with was the sports director in St. Cloud, Minnesota, where the audition was the North stars were playing the Winnipeg jets in St. Cloud. Were you there? Was that, or were you the following year? Maybe. Well, anyway, yeah, we played a we yeah. played a preseason game that I remember in St. Cloud. That's all I remember. Yeah, that was it. That yeah. was the one. I would, so, Pengi was so my I got, partner. I got to do it into the tape recorder. And after that, I got I said to Al after the, they put us in a van, they drove us to St. Cloud about an hour away from the Twin Cities or hour and a half. Said, um, so I said to Al, I said, you know what, Al, I got a I got a cassette tape with half a period with me and Al Shaver. That's pretty good night. <laughs> and then the next morning I got a call and. Uh, and they said, listen, if you can pass the, the on-air audition, which is Stars Hawks Saturday night preseason game, you got it. And so I had to go and do the audition with Al. And Al, before the game started, he gave me the score sheet. And um, his score sheet, he goes, here, Cape Scarred during the game. And this thing was a grid with all kinds of crap on it. And there were 371 penalty minutes that night. Oh, yeah, that's the old school. And I had to write them all down. Uh-huh. And uh, – and so Al was, we were laughing about it. Ralphie, you figure that sheet out yet? No, no, Al, I'm st- just leave me alone. You call the game. I'll get it all calculated out here. So, but Al and I had a great time together. Um, it was a wonderful working apprenticeship. I was lucky to get the job. You have to, the, people underestimate, you know, the, the luck required to land where I landed. Well, Ralph, and, were you, were, were, you know, did it, did it hurt when Al, when the move happened, you know, and I'll, I'll get into Norm, Mr. Green here in, in a little bit, but when that move did p- take place and, and what Al had helped you with and get you started and things like that, did it hurt that he didn't, because he didn't want to make the move to, to Dallas? Did, did, did that, how did that, how did you handle that? Well, you know, uh, again, and uh, as uh, as resets go, I'm Ralph Strangis. We're with Craig Ludwig here. We're talking about uh, early <laughs> stars days coming to, you know, have you, to, as Ted instructed you on how to do this you know because if people are listening they're like gosh i know that voice but who the hell is it no that sounds voice, old. you can't you there's no way you can mistake this voice going well on, coming okay out. that's fine on yeah. your audience perhaps that's true um so yeah I, it, it was funny because there were there were like two organizations going on at once there was the as you remember there was the dallas stars which was norm green wherever the heck he was trying to put this together. There was a lawyer. I think his name was, I'm not going to guess because I don't want to get him. His name was Brian. He was in Calgary. And then Norm was putting together a group for Minnesota or for Dallas. Those of us in Dallas, because Norm was gone, were kind of wondering what's going on here. And when we talked to the Minnesota people, the, you know, people who worked in the office there, John Thomas, Pat Forcia, they, they would say things to you, but you could tell they didn't really know much. And I didn't think anybody was really in the loop. So I, when this, Al wasn't going to go. And in my contract, there was a caveat that says Al Shaver isn't the play by play guy. It's my job. So Norm hired a guy named Bill Strong. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah who was the first president of the Dallas Stars. I don't mm-hmm. know if people knew that. Jim Lights came about. I don't know, six, eight months later. And then Jim Lights assumed the reins with Jeff Kogan. And in those early, now, when I got the call from Bill, I finally tracked Bill Strong down. And I said, dude, I got a year left on my contract and I'm the play-by-play guy in Dallas. Oh no, we already hired a play-by-play guy, he says. 
I said, you can't do that. I'm your play-by-play guy. Oh, no, no. We hired a guy. His name was Mike Forns. And, um, but you can come down. And I think he offered me half my salary that I was contractually obligated for. <laughs> and I said, for my final year, I said, that's not how that works. I said, okay. So, you know, I called my dad. I said, dad, my dad is a, you know, you remember my dad oh, yeah. passed a few yeah. years ago, but he was a very sharp corporate lawyer. He said, let me, let me talk to Bill. So he calls Bill, he calls me back. He said, I don't think we can make a deal with this guy. Let me negotiate a buyout for you. I said, well, you know what? I said, let me try and get Norm on the phone and see. Um, I said, okay. So I got Norm Green on the phone. I called Norm from my uncle's place in California. I don't know how I got it. I said, Norman, I said, uh, I'm your play-by-play guy. He said, you're not my play-by-play guy. We hired another guy. I said, okay, listen now. I said, I got a year left on my contract. I want to come. I know I can help you there. I think I'll be an asset. But if you don't want me there, you tell me. And if you want me there, I don't need anything other than your word that you will entertain keeping me there longer than the remaining year on my contract. And he said, you got it. And I think you'd be great here. I think you should come down and let's try and figure something out. I said, okay. So that's how I got down to Dallas. Now, Ralph, then, did you, uh, do you ever worry that you, you may come off as a pain in the ass to some people once in a while? Oh, I'm a huge pain in the ass. Oh, okay. So I you, know that. you you go oh, in loud that. and proud. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, I'm – look, here's the thing. Like, most people – it's hard for most people to ask for what they want. Or, you know, we, we're all sort of – we're all sort of trained to keep our mouth shut, our head down, respect authority. The boss is always right. You got to work for nothing for a long time. But these are all just constructs. <laughs> you know, I, I don't believe that that's true. And and I believe that that that, you know, if you push. The only way you get things is, is if you push, um, you know, I can get my I can get my cable bill negotiated down, but I got to invest an hour and a half on the phone and I got to push really hard. But I think so, but 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 it's the thrill of the push for you, isn't it? I I, well, I can sense that yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I mean, with yeah. my own personal career. Yes, it is. And um, so, yeah, I'm, but I am a pain in the ass. I'm hard to work with. I'm, you know, I'm very, um, uh, I'm set in my ways. I want it good. I don't have time for people who aren't as dedicated as I am or who understand things. I suffer fewer fools these days as I get older. Um, but like I say, when I when I got down there, there was a lot of work to do. I knew I could be helpful. And um, and I just pushed to get there. Yeah, and, and, and what you have for all that, Ralph, is you have a trophy case full, right? I mean, that you turn around well, and you go, it's all worth it. And I, and basically what you did is you proved it to everybody, right? I mean, I'm going to yeah. be this, and you stand up, and they're like, yep, he is that. Yeah, well, thanks, thanks. I mean, and 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 what I really did too, though, Luddy, is the stuff that I, you know, I, I collect people as much as anything else. You know, the, the fact that I was able to, to give a hand up to so many others and young people, that that's the stuff that I really, I really celebrate. You know, I, I mean, I found Selena Ray. I introduced her to Vito. I hired her and got her the, the our, our director and her together. And they have three beautiful daughters, you know, and, and, and a family. I, I brought in a lot of different people. Jason Walsh, who is the emperor now at Fox Valley's whatever, was my stats guy. I hired him out of the pro shop to be my stats guy. And, 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 you know, so many people, in the organization that are still there when I go there are people that I had a had an impact on or helped bring in. And I, I just feel so great about that. Um, that's means more to me than any of the stuff in my trophy case or anything like that. And I, uh, and I, I really, I, I'm really happy I was able to do that and, and, and have, some small effect on getting people into the business or giving them a little push forward. Well, Ralph, I wouldn't say it was small because I'm sure that we could reach out to all those people, a few more, and they would tell us all the things that you have done for them and got them, got the foot in the door. It reminds me of that, that saying, which I've always kind of just related to, to the hockey uh, player it, that's in Montreal, you know, from these failing hands, we pass this torch yours to, yeah. you know, hold it high. Right. And, and cause that, because after a while when we're in a role and, and I took that, cause I saw what happened in Montreal with us as the Larry Robinsons and Guy Lafleur's and Steve Schutz guys that I've mentioned, you could see when they were in their seventh, eighth, ninth year, that they were going out of their way to help all the young players. And because mm-hmm. you're just, you're, you know, you're, you're keeping it, you're keeping it moving on and you're proud of where you're at. Um, let's well, talk had, a little know, bloody not to, but I had, you know, even some of the players over the years, I feel really like when Val Nachushkin came to Dallas, yeah. you know, Val lived in my building 
And that first year, Val and I were really close. Like I, I, he would ride to the airport with me and I would ride home and he'd practice his English with me. And, you know, we, we got to be really good friends. And then when I left, you know, Val, Val struggled on the ice. So I was I just going to ask you about that. Airport, yeah. Right? And then it took I, him getting to Colorado and now he's, and you know. it was the best thing. And I, and I, and I texted him during the playoffs last year and we exchanged some really nice messages with each other. And that's the stuff. That's the stuff that I just love about the business is, is, is that especially for those young players, the older I got, there was another older guy around that they could come to that wasn't a coach or wasn't their dad or wasn't their whatever, and they could bounce stuff off me. I mean, hey, and sometimes I'd get stuff from them. Tyler Sagan taught me how to get on Tinder and the other dating. <laughs> so he's, it's true. It's true. Tyler said, oh, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. And about a week later after I'm on, he goes, how's it going? I said, I don't think I'm having the same experience Tyler Sagan's having. So you should, I, just, I you should have you, you should have used yeah. his face. What? Yeah, I should. I should, <laughs> should have used should. his face. Did you have that hat on? Did you have the Vikes uh, hat on? Uh, you know, Tyler Jesus. So, anyway, um, but that's and then when I see Tyler and Jamie at this thing to kind of bring it full circle, you know, there's hugs and geez, I, you know, I, I, uh, I really enjoyed that part of the job is is being able to be around. What they give me, which is that youthful, high competitive energy every day, fountain of youth guys, you know. Well, then tell um, me, tell me when you say it like that, what are parts of the job that not necessarily you don't enjoy, but you'd prefer to do without, but but that are necessary? And because it, it can't be all just, you know, roses and everything well, that, that we do. No, but, no, no, no. Oh, no. That's I mean, if it was, I'd still be there. Right? Yeah. Um, it's or or I think about, you know, that a little bit differently. Um, you know, it's. The grind, as is you know. Is it the prep? Is it the prep work or is that no, just it's natural not the prep for you? Even. It's not the prep even. It's the grind. It's, you know, it's, 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 there's another game and then another game and then there's a charity event and then there's another game and then there's another game and then, you know, then you're home for a day and then you're back out on the road and then you're, you know, it's, it's that, it's that grind and the cumulative effect of, of a season like that. And you guys, I don't understand how players do it really. I'm just in awe because I would always say if I'm tired, you know, if there's a spot in the season where I feel particularly tired, I'm like, how the hell are they even playing? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we, you know, listen, I, I don't, I don't exert a lot of physical energy on those trips, but, but, but doing three games and four nights on the air where your work is visible to the public and you really have to be on. And, and I think that's the other part, Luddy, where it doesn't matter what's going on in your life. People don't care. They don't, they don't give a shit. They, they, don't. they want, they want, Hi, Results? everybody. Welcome to Dallas Stars Hockey. Along mm -hmm. with Daryl Ray, I'm Ralph Strand. Just what a game we have tonight. They don't care if I just got in a fight with my wife. They don't care if somebody's sick. They don't care if I'm throwing up into a basket. You got to do the game. I, I mean, I really, I like the travel. I, I like, I like the people. I like all of that. Um, you know, but, but I think the day-to-day -day grind and, you know, as, 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 as good as, as you can be and as good of a, a supporting cast as you can have, that didn't change at all. I had the same director, the same producer, the same analyst, the same, the same, the same, the same, the same, the same. And the years started running together and there was nothing ever fresh about it. Do you, you think I, mean, I was, I was going to ask you that when you mentioned the word fresh, do you, because you know, we both, well, I don't know how you feel. I, I believe I do. I, I I've said this on, on these shows before. Bob Ganey is kind of like Scotty Bowman for me. And, yeah. and when, when Bob took over, as a general manager in Montreal, you know, going back to a, obviously a place where he's an icon, he's an icon in the NHL, but he goes back there. One of the first things he did is he went in and, and fired a whole bunch of people that had been there for years, uh, you know, in the front office. And he, he just felt that it needed a, it a change. Do you think that needs to happen? Um, or, or do people are, do people get complacent? Like if you have the same, and this isn't throwing veto or anybody on the bus, I'm just talking in no, general. No, 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 do, not do, at all. Does no, there the need best to be change? They, the stars are very lucky. They've had the same people who are really friggin' good yeah. in the same spots for a very long time. I believe in change. I believe in turnover. Um, you know, it's funny. I, I watch the Dodgers out here. I get the Dodgers feed. I'm, I'm, I get the spectrum sports Dodgers. And what the Dodgers do with their, I'm very interested in the future of sports broadcasting. This, this, this occupies my head constantly. It's going to, it's changing. It's going to change big. Um, but they, they keep a lot of people. I mean, they change their analysts out. They change their play by play during a season. They have five or six analysts on TV and that's baseball. 
They've got three play-by-play guys. Mostly it's Joe Davis, who's Fox's top guy now, so I get to watch him. He's very good. Um, but, you know, I, I like I, – I, I think that's a really interesting approach because you get to keep it fresh and you get new people so that when that same – you know, Oral Hershiser is their one, number one, like their razor – but they, you know, but they bring in different people. They bring in Nomar. They bring in Jessica Mendoza. They bring in Eric Kiros. And they kind of, and then when I see Oral again, I'm like, oh, oh, I missed Oral, you know? And so I think when people keep listening to Ralph, 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 I think sometimes they need a, fr- they need a fresher voice. Um, and they need that to kind of, and especially these days, and we can get, I don't want to get in the weeds with this stuff, but, but I'm a big believer in variety turnover. And that makes it interesting for the audience. You know what I'm saying? Like even the Sunday night football show, you see different combinations. And when I listen to Mike Tirico and Jason Garrett and Tony Dungy for that Vikings game on, on against the Patriots on Thanksgiving night, it's very interesting to me in a way that Mike Tirico and Chris Collinsworth wasn't interesting to me. That's not a rap on anybody. Mm-hmm. That's a, it's just a more interesting broadcast when things are moved around a bit sometimes. Well, and so what are your feelings on the concept that's going on with, with the NFL and, and the Mannings, you know, you kind of, Oh, being that's, off. that's, that's that. Oh, that's where is that is. gold. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, Why can't, can you do that in the NHL? I, I've asked this about four times because I think I want to do something. I'd love to do yeah, something like course, that. But. Oh, of course, no, of course we're going to do it in the NHL. So, so here's the thing. So back in the day, right, I'll give you the quick Ralph history of sports casting or what I think and where it's headed. Um, you know, back in the day when I was a kid, when you were a kid, the only way we could see our team play is through games, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, if you'd miss the game, you were unlikely to see highlights there wasn't a lot of uh, print backup on any of this stuff. It certainly wasn't current given deadlines and our newspapers would get there in the morning. and then at night. So maybe there was a once a week, 30 minute magazine show on one of the local stations, but there was nothing you had. No- so in order to watch a game, you were trained. My father would sit me down on Sundays. We'd watch six or eight hours of football or whatever was on. We'd watch Monday night football till halftime. And that's how I consumed games. Now audiences don't consume games that way. You see the, the the efforts by all leagues to shorten or to you know or to give them more snackable content and so on. People only tune in for small snippets. They don't need to wait for the radio to tell me what the score is anymore. They can look at their app. So you know, so terrestrial radio's down. Um, what I think is going to happen is these alt casts. You know, I see um, uh, Stephen A. Smith's going to do alt casting for NBA this year, which is a, which is the same game but on a separate toggle. You're going to see, and I think the Dallas Stars and other local teams are going to eventually do this, which is you're going to have Josh and Razor, right? But then somebody says, well, what about a bet cast? What if we start betting on this? And wouldn't we like to have a couple of people during the show bet cast? What about a Manning cast? Let's say, wouldn't it be fun to have Luddy and, you know, Ralph. Um, Brett all sit there and just talk for, for two hours about the game? What about a kids cast? What about a stats cast like Jason Bonetti does for baseball for ESPN? And as long as you're collecting revenue on all these outlets, you're inviting people in at different points for different styles of stuff. And you watch how that Manning stuff and that kid cast, what Nick, what, what Nickelodeon did with the kid cast right. for, the, for the NFL playoffs. I mean, dude, this is where it's heading. And I don't know that straight play by play casts are going to be, they're certainly not going to be as, 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 uh, as the only option anymore. Um, they're not going to be as important um, because what we're going to have to do is, and intermissions are going to change a lot too for the smart people. You're not going to be able to throw two guys behind a desk and keep rehashing the same stuff. I, that, I, I agree with that. Like that even when, I did that rehashed. for 10 years, 12 it's years, crazy. whatever, but I'm it's just crazy. saying the same thing that you just got done saying for 25 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's 30, it's 32 minutes. If 16 minutes per intermission, it's 32 minutes of dead programming. And for, and, and by and large, we mail that in. You know, we stack 12 car commercials together. We come back for a minute and a half. Somebody says, oh, here's the power play. We replay the same goal. Gee, they got to do this. The parrots in the cages continue to say the same things that they've been saying. That's a Howard Cosell term. Um, But, you know, and everybody repeats the same jargon. And then we go on. Well, if we had a 16-minute miniseries that appealed to a different segment of the population that was sponsored by, you know, whoever, or if we made the intermissions... Huh? Herman if Marshall. Suds with, yeah, Suds with Luds. Yeah, there you go. You know, um, for, but I'm just saying, like, I think it's possible. Like when I watch the Turner stuff, to me, the Turner stuff is about as close to um to how to 
keep the old but move forward with the new right. as there is. Because when I watch the Turner stuff, I'm almost more interested in the in watching the desk than I am the game. Well, isn't that kind of the way it was with Barkley? I'm not a basketball Absolutely. fan, but Absolutely. I will scroll yeah. around and go, okay, it's mm-hmm. about halftime, just hoping that I can catch their their intermission shows. Well, Biz is Biz is one of to me. I I I am so I can't believe it took him so long that somebody would hire Biz, but Biz is just great television. Mm-hmm. And you know, and you can agree with him, you can disagree with him, but he's a lightning rod. And what he says is interesting. And and the fact that he's there, I would I, I'm watching a one-one first period with eight shots to six, and I'm like, get me to the intermission. I want to see what Biz has to say. Right. You know, yeah. and I think those are going to be we have opportunities there to make intermissions, pre-games, post-games way more interesting in destination programming. And so that the game is the game and, and, and gambling is going to save everybody. Proposition gaming is going to save everybody because I think without it, well, look, the NFL built a, built a dynasty on it. I mean, what, what Amazon, how, how big is the NFL? <laughs> Amazon needed the NFL for market share, right? That ought to tell you, Amazon had to pay the NFL a billion dollars to go after more market share. That's got to tell you, for, that's got to tell you everything you want to know. So I, and, and the reason for that is their sports betting. Um, in the NFL and it's not anywhere else yet, but it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And that's going to change everything. So I think there's going to be more opportunity, not less for aspiring broadcasters and, 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 and people like you, you don't, you don't sleep much, Ralphie. I can tell, I can tell wheels are always spinning with you. Always turning, buddy. boy. I I know. So let's talk about a a little bit about your time in Dallas. And, And again, I, everybody synonymous how long is this podcast is it like four days or something or? hey listen it, it it's just blowing by right now i mean we got you know we got <laughs> bills know. to pay here you know you're getting know. A, you'll get a care package you'll get a lot sitting on your step one day oh literally or oh, you'll pick fun. me up off the street or something like that Those talk are, to me about your time in dallas for- ralphie i want to know i want and i want to i guess i want to talk I, we pretty much all know about your time and you i know you loved it here but along with that how difficult was the decision when you felt it was time to make a move well, you know, um, it, it was it's it's Bob the Gamey again, who is kind of our oracle, isn't he? Yeah. You know? um, yeah, very much so. And I asked Bob. I, I said, don't know what well, that means, said, but I agree. If you well, said he's it, the it guy that you true. know. He's he's Yoda. Yeah. Okay. Right? He's Yoda. Yeah. So I, I was talking to Bob about it, and I said, um, and he said, "Well, do you feel a push away or a pull to something else?" Oh, how and, isn't that Bob Ganey right there? Yeah, it's Bob. You says know, so like much Bob in like seven words. Yeah, yeah, it's like Yoda, man. And I yeah. said, you know, Bob, actually, it's a little bit of both. Um, and you know, nobody leaves these chairs. It's this is the this is as tough a scrum as there is, man. There's there's now thirty two chairs, right? I mean, more if there's radio and stuff. But but that means if the U.S. Senate, if everybody in the U.S. Senate retired tomorrow. There'd be three times as many jobs available as there are for NHL play-by-play guys. Th- th- these jobs don't exist. And so to leave, it really, it took a lot. But, you know, um, it, I mean, the words I would use are, you know, I had gotten stale. Um, stale with my work, stale with some of my work relationships, um, stale with uh, with just my whole view of things. And again, a lot of this is me. Uh, I don't, there's nobody that was responsible for me leaving other than me. And that's, and that's, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what anybody thinks. I know there's a lot of speculation out there, but I decided to leave. Um, And I decided to leave um, because it was in my best interest. Yeah. uh, But uh, yeah, it was, it was a very hard decision, but at the end it was the right decision. And when I look back, and it's almost been now it's been eight years or something, eight, mm-hmm. I think 2014, whenever Ben won the Art Ross, my last my last game I did for the Stars was uh, was Jamie Ben winning the Art Ross trophy. I think that was 2014. And um, I just I look back and I say, you know, I, I really enjoyed all the different things I've been able to do. And I would have never been able to do them without, um, you know, being a. Uh, being away from that. So do you want to jump back it, into any, any kind of any, I, I know you've done games for the Kings, right? And you've, you've done other things. Kings. I did one, I did one for the Hawks last year and I did it because, and I did it in Dallas and I did it because um, it was kind of tough. I wanted to get uh, Kaylee Chelios in the booth and you know, Kaylee. 
I um, do. And I know Chelly's had plenty of talks with Chelly about Kaylee. And she, she, by the way, she's incredible. I, I remember when she, she was doing it in, with, in Tampa Bay. I called Chelly and awesome. I said, dude, I said, I, I, I don't know if you're telling her things, but the, she is really good and she gets it. She's really good. She Listen, uh, she came back. So I was helping Chicago with some stuff last year. She had left Tampa where she was a radio analyst and digital reporter for five years. And I mean, you know, she knows everything. She's great at this and she presents well and all of that. And I, and I really had to work on the Blackhawks to say, you know, she's available, right? She moved back to Chicago. Yeah, we're not sure. Blah, 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 blah. And, you know, so, um, but, but not to get too deep in it, to, to get her on the air required me to do the game with her. And so it was me and her and a young woman named Jenna Rose, we put on sideline and the Hawks were able to have two women do it. And they were both really good. And Kaylee, listen, I've never done a game with my analyst having a breast pump in the booth next to me. And, but, the, but Kaylee was, yes, you, you know, Kaylee, Kaylee's so friggin' awesome. We had such a good time that if that was the last NHL game I did in Dallas, December 18th, last year, I've made t-shirts that said my last rodeo and Johnny Klingberg scored the overtime goal. It was just a beautiful night. I, I had a great time. Now, if, if you got an offer uh, to be full time again, would you take it, or has no, that train left? No, Rob, I, I would say very unlikely. Um, first of all, the odds that somebody would hire me to do that again. Well, all they're going to have to do is listen to this thing. I think the phone's going to be yeah. ringing off the hook. Well, yeah. So, well, listen. I like to go in and 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 be a guy that they can depend on, and maybe cover for somebody if they're gone. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. You know, it would have to be a really to answer your question. It'd be a really exceptional opportunity that would be beyond just regular play-by-play broadcasting, where I would have an opportunity to explore with that group what the future of sports casting is going to be and what how I could help impact that in a variety of ways and help train young people to come in behind me. Those are the things I look for. Nobody needs to hear me do another thousand games. Uh, I sure they hold that. I think there's a lot of people in Texas. I would beg to differ with well, that they, one. Yeah. They, and they're very nice to me. Boy, I come in and I get, I, everybody says, um, so you're going to go to a stars game. I, yeah. I said, I like being Ralph Strangis every now and then. <laughs> um, you know, they let me be Ralph Strangis every now and nah, then. You're, just, you're Ralph. I love those. I love the fans in Texas. I really enjoyed my time there. I, I just, I love going to American Airlines Center now. I love going to games. It's, it's, it's a blast. I'm coming back in March. I know for sure to see some games. Um, and I, I, I'm trying to make two or three trips a year there now. Oh, and, well, that's, that's good. Uh, you, know, you know, Nate, Nate, uh, Nate Newton does, you know, the football side of things here on the dub network with us. And yeah, I was just talking yeah. to those guys on the way out and apparently Seattle is, is coming into Dallas. The Kraken are coming in. Speaking of that, let, let me, let me, anyway, they're going to try to get to a game in March. And I said, well, let's find out if we can get an alumni suite. So hopefully we'll keep in contact. Maybe that uh, all ties in together. Yeah, sure, Ralphie sure. doing games when you did games. And now when I mentioned Seattle, Seattle played LA last night, the score of the game was nine to eight. When you did our games for the majority of our our 90s teams, I mean, the scores were two to one. Would you prefer to be doing the games the way the game is played now versus the way, because it seems like it was probably just over and over this one goal, two goals again, you know, that kind of stuff. More excitement today. Would you rather call games today or does it not matter to you? Well, first of all, let me say this, because I feel I feel like I partially I'm responsible for you a little bit in the broadcasting business because you worked with me a couple of times. You're doing a really good job here. You're I'm good not doing anything, Ralph. I'm saying like four words. We've been on here 42 minutes. You're I've said about this. three things. You're, well, and also it's your own deal. And when you're by yourself, you're. I think you're really good like this. Um, so tell Ted, I think he should keep you doing this for a while. No, t- um, I don't. I don't think Ted really gives. Are you shit making any money with it? Or? No. Listen, I'm I'm yeah. pimping out my my whiskey and my. My oh, gummies yeah. up here, and they're great, great sponsors. Well, Trust me. Would you imagine that Ludwig has a whiskey company and Early Bird is a sponsor? That is weird, man. Yeah, I know. It's, I don't know how that happened, but how'd they sell that. <laughs> they're yeah. great sponsors. Um, I can tell you that yeah. much. Well, look, there's, you know, the, we always have nostalgia, and we have euphoric recall. We have that about, you know, any good time in our life. And, and, you know, it's why old people are like me always say, you know, well, back in those days, you don't understand, but it was way, way better than it is now. And that's, you know, it's probably BS, right? It's a little bit of both. Um, 
I really enjoyed those games because when you look back at the body of work now, it's the Kierkegaard life lives forward, but you can only examine after you're done with it and then go back and say, okay, what was it really like? And what it was really like was really cool. We had a long stretch of really consistent teams that you guys expected to win every night. You mostly did win every night and walking into the press box. I had the same swagger. A lot of you guys had, which is this team is the shit. If you beat them, it's probably a mistake. And this is going to be a really fun game to call, even if it's a two, one game. Um, Because, you know, we were all sort of, you know, I wasn't that much older than you guys at the time. We were all kind of in it together. Um, now the game, you know, the game is faster. Um, the 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 skill and the size and the fact that they can move the way they move. It's it, as you know, it's a very different game. I think there's challenges to both. I I I don't like board battles. I don't like teams cycling in the corner. I don't. There's not particularly interesting to call. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like what's particularly interesting to call is trading rushes and, you know, and, and long intense sequences where teams are trapped in their own zone. And if those things have, and you guys used to do that, you know, you'd score on the rush and you'd trap teams and you'd have a lot of chances in a row. But when That's we're boring, fun to me. but, but, but I yeah. agree with you. I agree with everything yeah. you're saying. So every far. era has its asterisks, right? Every era has its, has its thing, you know? And I, I mean, if if I the, the changes I'd make today to the game are, you know, like here. If they, Ralphie, I, it's like you're I mean, looking I, at my sheet. I I I I, I, re- oh, okay, I wrote down right, here. Go ahead. You want to ask it? No. I, look, you, I, it's like I, you've it, seen it. I want to know if there were any changes. What would you make in today's game? I I go after the goalies big. I I mean I'd really go after them. I think there's way too much padding. Now here's here's my here's my ten thousand foot view. Okay. The general managers in the NHL who have a lot of power, who control a lot of things, although they've been they've been a bit they, they, they've been able to get them over the fence on a couple of things are what? They're mostly Canadian. They're mostly old third and fourth line guys. They mostly really value the, the you know, the bottom six forwards, your your hard defensive puck battles. That's who they are. Right. So they're going to overvalue that part of the game. Um so, so changes have been very slow to be made. Here's an example. Um, you can knock a puck down with a high stick in your defending zone, right? Because you're defending. But if you try and knock a puck down with a high stick in the offensive zone, you're trying to score. And well, we can't have that, you know? And I think the reason is, is that third and fourth line guys generally can't make that play. And they say, it's, it's not a hockey play. Well, sure it is. If you're Tyler Sagan, you know, if you're Jason Robertson, those guys can make those plays, you know, and I and I think when you have, you know, a hand pass in the F, I'm sorry, I was going to bring pass. that up the next. Hand pass yep. in the defending zone as opposed to a hand pass in the attacking zone. Right. So it's like, well, because you're using your hand to defend, but you can't use it to score a goal. You know, you hear you hear this stuff baked in, Luddy. You hear an analyst and you probably said it a million times. Well, he's taken a penalty 200 feet from his own net. Yes. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So. You can take a penalty if you're trying to prevent a goal, but not if you're trying to score one. I mean, there's 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 no, you know, there's there's no difference to be had there to me. But what it speaks to is it speaks to the still defensive mindset of of coaches and GMs who are pretty much the same guy. When when you look across when you look across the league, they're all the same guy. Um, you get a few tweaks here and there, and that's why I always celebrate when teams with puck possession and teams who skate and teams who make plays do well. But I think the number one thing I would target, I do two things. I target the goalies and I would shrink those pads and I'd measure them every friggin' night. What about the you know, challenges it, that it, are taking forever? The offside challenges. You, do you have a well, appetite? Because yeah, for I mean, you guys, I, I you, should, you guys got to keep talking and keep talking while they're spending minutes trying they, to figure need, things they out. They need quicker. Ch- they need, you know, they have that, that NHL in the NFL, they have, what do they call that? The, um, the quick challenge or whatever it is where the guy just looks at it in the booth and says, yeah, it's good, go. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I think if we did more of that. But the other one I would say is, and if you look at the analytics in terms of quality of play, competition in third periods in tight games, it goes right off the thing. So here's the change I would make, and it wouldn't affect the players on the ice. Um, the first tie break is goal scored, period. There. End of story. So now, so now for playoffs. So now... It won't change the way the game's played on the ice, but if you're up 3-1, 
maybe you want to score a couple more goals because maybe that tie break's going to play, right? So instead of just in the third period of a 3-1 game where you're locking it down and it's unwatchable, right? Um, maybe you'd do that. But that's why proposition gaming is going to help because in the third period of a 3-1 game, you can bet, will either goalie allow another goal? Will it get to four? Will it get to five? Will we see a fight? Will we see this? And that'll keep people engaged as well. You can't rely on, gee, Josh and Razor are really clever and I want to listen to them because that's not that's not enough anymore. It used to be enough in a route. But, uh, but entertainment options are, there's too many entertainment options. You, there's no way people are going to sit through a shitty hockey game anymore. Well, Ralph, <clears throat> I know you're complaining about the time, how long we've been here, so I don't want to keep no, you here any I'm longer. I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. Well, I, I'm, you're over there in Boca del Vista, and I'm assuming that you yeah, have yeah, yeah, yeah. an the early bird. The Jeff early Lundin. bird lunch ends probably around 2 o'clock. you got to make sure you don't miss it. I you see how I got early London, bird in there? Be in bed at four, so, hey, yeah. did you see how I got early bird in there? Oh, My I gummies? Know. Oh, no, listen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, I'm gonna, I want to ask you this last one then, Ralph. And... Uh, you're going to do a broadcast, and I, I, I asked the same question to your former partner. It's your dream yeah. broadcast. Which, who which, who are you which, working which, with? Daryl? <laughs> yes, Daryl. Listen, I listen. Razor and I are good. <clears throat> like, In fact, Razor and I are probably as good as we've ever been. I, I got nothing but respect for how he does his job. Nothing. You know, he, works, <laughs> he works his ass off. He's really good on the air. Um, you know, I mean, he's a weirdo. We're all weirdos. You know, I mean, you get in this business, you're weird. <laughs> what do you got? What do you got? I just want to know who you would choose in, in to do what? all of time to do what you're, you're, you're a broadcast with. What would be your dream team? You know, I mean, who you can pick anybody. I, I think Razor picked, uh, I, I don't know, it was a couple guys from Montreal, and and I'm sure Bob Cole was in there. But who, who would be the Cole. guys? If you could pick your, let's just say there was a three-man broadcast going on, who would be the two guys you'd have side by side? Right now for a hockey game? No, for croquet. Yeah, yeah, of course, for a hockey game. Pickleball. Listen, pickleball, you and yeah. I should be investing in pickleball. I, <laughs> I, I can't even tell you. Hey. I'm, I'm in Pickleball Central here. It, this is a real thing. Like, I'm getting pickled as soon as this show's over with, so I'll be halfway there. Attaboy. Uh, yeah. Oh, so you give me your guys. Pickleball. Who are your you guys? Um, well, I mean, I think <laughs> here's what I'd do. I'd go on. Uh, there's some young broadcasters I really like who I'd really like to work with. And I'd like to give a leg up to um, um, if I, you know, that that would be I mean, the people that I like watching now. Um, I'd say. Um, boy, you know, I, I got to tell you, doing that game with Kaylee was really something. Now, you, you can really go something. back. You can go back into the um, 20s or 30s if you'd like. I'm just asking your, and if you had any idols, heroes who you'd like to do it with. Um, no, no, you know, I mean, I, no, I really, uh, I mean, I worked with Al Shearer. I've worked with some of the best. I've worked with a hundred partners. I, I, I mean, I know I'm having, I know I'm not answering the question the way that people might answer the question. I can't again, believe it. I can't believe answer. I've actually semi stumped you know, because I, you ha you don't have an answer for the I know, first like, thing. You, you semi stumped me. I mean, I'd say, you know, I'd say if there was another situation where I could get somebody on the air with me, like that was my dream broadcast last year. What I did is I got two people on the air for the first time in in a hundred years for the Chicago Blackhawks, two women were working the show. There have not been, I think Kaylee might've been the first woman analyst in the booth, in the booth or very close to one of the first. And, and, and that Jenna Rose on the sideline to give her that opportunity to do a couple of interviews. That was the dream broadcast for me. And I had it um, because now their careers got a little push out of it. And that's, and to me, that's that that's what my whole life is about. So I'm going to I'm going to sit on that, that I already had that. And it was last December 18th. Well, Ralphie, you, you to me, you, you're a mentor. And, and again, I'm going to go back to that saying in Montreal and 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 you're going to get you're going to continue to give back. And I appreciate your time today. And I know it's probably time for a nap. I mean, what what time is it there? Eleven? Yeah, well, it's quite the mid morning now here. So I got to you know, I might have to go out and um, well, I got to ride my bicycle today. That's one of the things I got to do. So uh, are there two yeah. wheels on that? Just two wheels? <laughs> Yeah, well, listen, I've got five bicycles. Wow. I've got two road bikes. My one road bike I really like to ride a lot, and I'm going to Portugal to ride in the spring. Um, and then uh, I got two electric bikes, which are really fun for when guests come. And then I've got a third bike my buddy's working on. How about this one? So he's building me a rocket ship bicycle that goes 40 miles an hour. 
I don't know now, if I'd consider that a rocket ship. I know that, that doesn't sound ship. very fast to you, but if you've ever been on a bicycle, start thinking about 40 miles an hour on a bicycle. And, dude, I don't care how fast you get that hog going, man. That's fast. Well, I can tell you that I totaled one going around 90. So let me tell you, that's not that's not fun. That's Do you need not... my lawyer's number again? Or you no, guys I'm good, man. It's, it's all settled. <laughs> Hitch, so Hitch and I, when Hitch is here, and he's had some health stuff lately, maybe give him a call. Yeah. Or give him a text or something. But he's so Hitch and I, when he's here in the winter, which he is now, we usually play golf once a week. We play on Sundays, we play at his place. But he's had some health You're a stuff, so he's for not punishment, playing quite dude. A Huh? You're a glutton for punishment. Oh, listen, it's it's um it's like so I played with how about this for some? I played with me, Hitch, Bob, and Mike Babcock. <laughs> how about that for some? So Bob kept I was riding with Bob, and Bob would say, it's like playing with um, it's like playing with David Copperfield. He tees off. You don't see this huge guy. And all of a sudden he's at the pin saying birdie, <laughs> then, you know, like, OK, so that's Hitch. So I tell Hitch, I go, listen, I'm going to buy two tickets to the Kraken. Why don't you buy the two next to me? Uh, OK, well, have the guy call me. So I called the guy and I said, here's the two I want. They were up high and <laughs> on the aisle. And so. uh the guy calls Hitch, and I hadn't heard for a while. And finally, the guy calls me, my sales rep, with something else. And I said, hey, what'd you ever do with Hitch? He said, oh, he didn't buy two. He said he's going to split your two with you. <laughs> oh, really? Is that right? Okay. So I think Hitch and I are splitting. So wait a two. second. Are you sitting? Oh, okay. I thought you were saying you're going to be sitting next to Hitch at Kraken Games. Oh, I huh? will, though. Yeah, I will, though. Sometimes we're going to go together. Oh, but, that, I, know, I, I just yeah. need somebody to snap a picture of that for me. Oh, we will. We okay. Will. I mean, I'm I'm off all the social media. I don't have a I don't have anything. I'm in a head in the sand period, and I fucking love it. <laughs> it's it's awesome. I don't. I'm not dragged into anything. I don't have to take opinions on much. I, you know, like I say, I ride my bicycle. I play golf. I work on my projects here. I teach at the local theater. I, you know, sounds like you are enjoying everything, and you deserve everything. And I appreciate you taking the time today. And I'm sorry I, I went past 15 minutes, and I know it's time for a nap. I got to have a nap. All right. Ralphie, Ralph Strangis, thank you, brother. I appreciate you it. You bet, Luddy. My pleasure.